Professor Kerstin Enflo, member of the Committee of the Economic Sciences Prize. What is this year's prize about? It's about one of the largest questions in social sciences. It's about what drives economic growth and why doesn't it stop when it has started? Could you tell me more about that? What why is this important to know? So I think we tend to think of economic growth as something that some people take for granted, at least in the developed world. We think of economic growth as something that happens at 1% to 2% per year annually. But it's actually quite amazing that growth can be so sustained over a long run. And when you think about it, there is a lot of turbulence going on underneath this pattern. So for example in the US, 10% of all firms leave the market every year and 10% enter the market every year. So when you think about it, how is it possible that such a disruptive process can also generate these stable growth patterns that we see? So what have these laureates found out about this? So they have worked with different methods. Joel Mercure is an economic historian who has worked with historical methods to ask the fundamental question about why did growth even occur in the first place. When we think about it, throughout most of history, there was no growth, basically, even though there were innovations and technological change. So we tend to think about innovations and technological change as the driver of economic growth. But we need to understand how did that start? Why did they start to feed into economic growth? And that's something that Joel McCure has studied in depth. And the other two. And Philip Bagion and Peter Howitt has made a mathematical model on modern data to explain how this disruptive process with firms entering and leaving the market competing with each other, how that could actually generate economic growth. And what does this knowledge mean to us in everyday life? What could it be used for? It's important for us to think about the fundamental forces that drive economic growth. So we need to understand what drives it in order to make sure that it doesn't stop as it has or that, as it did previously in economic history or before. So we need to understand that it's all about scientific innovations or science-based innovations that drive economic growth. It's about cherishing or making sure that the process of creative destruction keeps on functioning and also to make sure that society is open to change. And for that, it's also important to help those people that are losing out from technological pro progress. Help how? In terms of safety nets, for example. So, so there needs to be a policy that makes sure that, uh, that there is support for creative destruction in the sense that those people that have lost their job because they have been outcompeted should get retrained or get help to get back into the market. Now everyone is talking about artificial intelligence, AI. Could this be used to sort of handling the new technology of AI as well. I think it's very hard to say something about AI in general for at this point, but what we may know about AI is that it is a technology that is going to increase uh, innovation probably and the way we access information. We saw it with last year's prize, for example, that went to AlphaFold, where AI had been used to generate new medical knowledge. So AI has the potential to deliver new innovations and new knowledge. But of course, there are many dangers also involved with AI, and society needs to make sure to keep those in balance so that there is still a support for technological change in society. You were there where they tried to find the laureates this morning and call them. Can you tell us anything about that? Yes, so we got hold of Philippe Aguillon this morning and uh, yeah, the first thing he said was that uh, I'm going to faint, he said. <laughs> so that was very nice. He was very happy to, to hear about the prize and he was also very happy to share it with Peter Howitt and Joel Mercure. Unfortunately, we haven't reached them yet. They, are, they, are, they live in the United States and I think they are maybe just waking up now to hear the news. Oh, you don't even know if they know it or not? Yet. I personally don't know if they know it yet. Perhaps other people in this room have this information. Could you tell us anything personal about these laureates as, as scientists, as persons? Anything personal about them? So uh, I, um, I know, for example, that uh, Joel Mercure is the one I have met in various conferences and on various occasions, and I know that he's a very much loved uh, supervisor and he has many students. So I've been to a conference once where they asked all the students of Yomu Kutu to stand up and that was half a room basically. So it's a very, uh, it's, he's a, really a, a, a leader in terms of academia, in terms of you know supervising students and inspiring people to study economic history. Interesting and finally um, would you tell me in half a minute why you think this prize is so important? 
I think we are currently living through a period of fast technological change and this prize helps us to put that into perspective, to understand what the good news about technological change is, but also some of the potential threats that we need to keep in mind. And I think this prize helps us to guide ourselves in this rapid development that we are currently undergoing. Thank you so much, Professor Shastin Ian Flo, for uh, explaining all this to us. Thank you. Thank you.